Hi, this is Paula from CHE. Today we're in conversation with Jim Mustard, Councillor of Inverness County's District 3, a member of the board at the Cape Breton Food Hub. The Food Hub is a co op that links local food producers and consumers. It provides an infrastructure where producers can sell their product. As a board member, Mustard is working on a new project to further develop local food production here in Cape Breton. He tells me the COVID-19 pandemic has made clear the importance of growing and distributing food locally. Here's our conversation. You know, um, when I first moved here, I was 21 years old. And um, at that time, there was many small farms and it was a relatively food secure region, uh, Inverness County. So most people had a mixed farm. They would have animals, vegetables, root cellars. And in that 40 years that I've been here, um, a lot of that, both the knowledge and the practice has gone. So uh, when we opened up the food hub and we started to um, coordinate from the producers across the island to find the, the markets, whether that was restaurants or individuals, uh, we quickly found that there wasn't an excess of boat production. So there wasn't an excess of meat production or uh, vegetables or grains or th other things that traditionally were here in abundance. So it became apparent that that was going to be the weak link at some point. We were going to run out of uh, the ability to supply the, the demand of the consumer. So the, um, the natural thing when the pandemic hit was to kind of say, okay, what's the thing we need most right now to give opportunities for more production to happen? And uh, in discussions with a number of people that I used as an advisory group, it came to this idea of, it's not about more equipment. It's not about more land. It's about coordinating all the component pieces to allow people who are already there to do more, uh, newcomers to establish and do something, and to use the equipment and the resources that are already in place. Why is it that there's been less agriculture in, in the recent years? It's interesting. I think that uh, traditionally, the way that most rural areas, and it would be the same in Quebec as it is here, uh, essentially the beginning of the farming tradition was a, sustain, you know, was a subsistence farming. So it was a thing that you made sure you had done while you may have had a part-time job here or a job there. Um, everything switched now. And, you know, more jobs came to the community, the pulp mill. So people didn't have to you know, raise their food to create the insurance policy if there wasn't work. So I think, and the other thing that changed is that a lot of people would have that large extended family, right? So you'd have like five, seven, ten children in your family, plus your grand, you know, your parents living in the house. So there was always an, enough labor around too to accomplish the tasks that had to be done. So you'd have the, the knowledge and the wisdom of the elders that knew how to plant and when to do it and how to take care of the animals. And you always had a succession of young people that were, you know, young people and what do you do you get out there and you make hay and help in the garden so all of that changed in other words I think it's the same across the country we went down to smaller families right two children um, we quite often didn't care for our for our um, our elders in the home anymore and so we lost a lot of that connectivity and capacity in a very short period of time I'm talking two generations I don't even know how a generation works but like in two 20 year um, periods, so much of that change that took away the capacity and the knowledge of, uh, of what to do. So when you imagine the project completed, what do you see? What would it look like for this region? I think it says to me that with the food hub being the coordinator to get the food to market, we would have a number of producers across the whole island who are growing an abundance of crops and the coordination was where it went when it was how it was harvested and where it went so in the vision i see is that we have facilities that are storing the produce whether that's root vegetables cabbages and meats and grains in ways that we can manage it throughout the year so we'd be foods so it wouldn't just be like a farmer's market and we're closed in october right it would be that we could could extend our season throughout the year because we've coordinated everything from the production to the harvesting to the storage to the distribution which the food hubs done and strengthen the whole island while tourism 
isn't working while we still need to eat. We still need to have food in our hospitals, in our you know, extended care facilities. We still need food in our homes. And this way we can take a step forward um, just as an economy to ensure that if something happens globally or there is another disruption that we've got this moving in the right direction. Will we get there within a short period of time? No, this will take years, I suspect. So that part of it is just to get the direction and the commitment. And like the Food Hub, which has been going for uh, six or seven years now, once you've really established the way things operate, I think you can start to see the, um, you can see the vision come to life. So let's talk about COVID-19. Um, what has it taught you uh, for this project? What do you think that it's, it's revealed itself to be so important right now? <laughs> so what has COVID-19 taught me? You know, when, I, when, I, when it hit, I was going like, what would our ancestors say? What would they have done? Like it, it was March, right around March 13th, 14th. What would they have done? They wouldn't have missed a beat. Our great grandmothers and, grand, and grandfathers would have said, okay, it's time to make maple syrup. Okay, it's time to get our land ready. Okay, so, you know, in, in the kind of step back that for thousands of generations, we did the same thing within our communities to ensure that we were there from the Mi'kmaq, the traditional people of the land here, through the settler communities, the Acadians, the Gaelic, uh, the newcomers that came here. Everyone up until the last two generations made sure that every season was tied together. And I said, whether the pandemic was here or not, that's what you would have done. A part of your life would have been ensuring that we had things taken care of. And so I think it just reminded me how far we've come in some regards as a society towards individual uh, freedoms, but we've lost maybe that collective ability to do what was always done to ensure that we were 12 months to the year able to maintain our lives. So that kind of just resonated with me that, boy, we could have, uh, we could have turned it into that story very quickly and everyone has. I think, Paula, there's a number of people that are growing gardens now and really looking at food security differently right now. It's a big conversation. We could have really had a, maybe a, a huge kind of up, you know, uptake of potential production this year just at that moment to take that narrative back about who we are and where we came from. At what step of the project are you right now? We created the proposal uh, uh, to look at the coordinator position that would have, if we can imagine the island, Cape Breton Island, like all these little places like Shetty Camp, the Marguerites, the Mabu area, uh, Iona area, where there could be capacity to kind of work in the communities to do more, then this coordinator would work across the whole island. So. There was a buy-in from a number of, of those local leaders in communities. There was a buy-in from the Food Hub to uh, put the proposal through them. So the effect of the management of the position would be through the Food Hub board. And then the funding, we had raised $15,000 from, um, from a few organizations and we we're looking for 50,000. So I sent it off to the province of Nova Scotia through the Department of Agriculture. I sent it to all the local MLAs on the island because we were looking at the region being Cape Breton Island for now. It's not that you couldn't expand it, but it just made sense. And we haven't heard back from anyone from the, I've been working with the federal uh, MPs and they've been connecting me to some programs. And I have one that just came out to yesterday that I'm going to apply to and it can do you know, 50,000 to 250,000. And we're looking for about 50,000. So I'm really quite excited that that one may work. But quite often, Paula, they're always looking for it to be equipment or infrastructure when we're looking for a person with the skill sets and the passion to connect the infrastructure, like to connect who's got the equipment to till the ground, who's got the equipment to help seed, who's got the equipment to help harvest, where would you store it? Is there extra labor around? How can I coordinate, you know, once that's all in place with maybe an extra piece of land? So all those things that are out there, whether it's tractors or people or equipment or storage facilities, but need this kind of piece of coordination is more the skill sets of a person than it is buying something new or building something else. So 
we had done a scan over the years at the food hub of just what's out there, right? In terms of equipment, there's a co-op at the uh, Victoria Inverness Federation of, uh, of Agriculture that has a half million dollars worth of equipment that they, they rent and lease out to farmers. So, you know, it's, it's just that having that available in a Shetty Camp region or someone knowing about it who's trying to start out, it's just that level of, uh, of mobilization that we were envisioning. So I'm going to apply for this uh, grant. They say it's a 50-day turnaround. It's going to make it hard because we had put this proposal together in February or in March, right when it hit. Um, by April, we were all in position, so we thought it was great timing. But now we're into June, so it's going to make it hard to kind of get anything for this season in the ground. But we can certainly, uh, I think long term, this is one of the most important things that a region can think about is uh, increasing the food production. Uh, helps the economy, helps the health of the people, and certainly makes it a more vibrant community. So we, will, we won't give up. Let's put it that way. You've identified uh, possible land, right, uh, here in the area, in Inverness County even, right? Yeah, I think the potential of land is the easy one. So there's lots of land. It's finding what land's really suitable for what crop. So if you were doing carrots or potatoes or you were doing a grain crop, um, it's having that kind of knowledge working full time. Um, there's a uh, the Strathlorn Tree Nursery, which is in uh, just outside Inverness in Strathlorn, and it's been uh, studied for a number of times by consultants to look at how we could diversify the use of that facility that grows trees for the forestry sector. It has hundreds of acres of totally level land that's never been anything but growing grass, and I'm not knocking it. Plus, they have a facility with a cooler and a freezer. They have an acre of greenhouse that's uh, relatively empty for, um, you know, from the fall right through to the spring. So it's about how do we get that mobilized and in integrated into what's going on here. And having a volunteer or someone do it on the side of their desk, I don't think will do it justice. And this is just Inverness County. And then we could go to Victoria County. We could go to Richmond County. We can include the fisheries. Um, and then you've got really quite a full time when you're looking at it uh, amount of work to try and coordinate and help create best opportunities. Has the municipality put any money? The municipality funds the food hub. Um, we didn't, I didn't ask the municipality this time specifically because we're under a lot of stress. We derive our revenues directly from taxation and we've had to take a fair amount of other responsibilities on with the COVID-19 just in terms of helping uh, actually some work with food security. So I really thought this was a time for the province and the feds to step up. We municipally have to really take care of ourselves this year because it's going to be hard on individuals and businesses this year. You can imagine tourism businesses to be able to pay their taxes. It's going to be a hard year. So kind of thought this was an opportunity with it. money flowing quite freely at the federal level and somewhat at the provincial level, this could have been an opportunity. And I think it still is. Does the project have a name? The name is, a, I think it's the Food Production Coordinator. So under the Pancake Breton Food Hub, uh, it's the Food Production Coordinator. So kind of looking at every aspect of food production from seed right through to storage. Um, not a very romantic name, but the name is just the same. And then, so initially there would only be one position and then maybe eventually that would grow to more jobs. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I think um, the, the initial one is just to see what the demand was on the ground and what, what needed to be coordinated. So kind of a high level, let's get going, let's get a few examples of how it works. And then if the demand grows, really, uh, it's a unique opportunity to take a little bit of money and start to improve the lives of lots of people's ability um, to derive part of their living from the land or the sea uh, and make that available uh, to our local uh, economy, which would be, it's just like the food hub itself 
really isn't there to make money. It's there to help producers connect to the, um, the market, right? So a lot of our support of the Food Hub is understanding that it's not the real, it's, it's just a mechanism in the food system that really supports it. And I think this is the same way to look at it. If you need two or three positions down the road and it's starting to really work across the island, that would be, uh, yeah, that would be the result of us understanding how it works. And you gave me a few examples before, but what would be the type of crop that we could grow here? Well, traditionally, we, uh, when we looked at a census from uh, 1918, we had uh, like 80,000 bushels of oats and wheat and barley, um, everything, every root crop you can imagine. Um, we know that uh, we could grow dried beans. We could do pretty well everything. Um, we have a short season, but we have a long fall. Uh, it's just about getting really good with some of the infrastructure. Some of the advanced farmers these days use greenhouses to get everything going ahead of time. But really, we're, the, we're, we're in a unique position just to have such a, uh, such a rich history of production to know that we could pretty well do anything. So would greenhouses be part of it? I think so. I think in the way that we understand now, if you want to grow uh, crops like tomatoes, uh, some things like squash that need to get started early to get to full size, I think greenhouses make a lot of sense for us to kind of jumpstart as we had a frost. I mean, we had a frost here two nights ago. So June, whatever that was, 10th or 9th, it was like, holy cow like that a killing frost from the coast someone who lives on the coast i live inland and it it would have wiped out all your you know tomatoes and traditionally i mean in a lot of places they figure the may long weekend is when you can put everything in well you can't do that here we're almost a month behind what you'd say is like maybe you know quebec would be or southern ontario or bc so um, a greenhouse would be an essential tool or greenhouses or that type of thing. You can write to us at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.